Hey everyone, welcome to Maxi tutorial number 30. Today we're going to work on multi-input effects in Jitter. And by that, I simply mean effects that have more than one video input. So let's uh, jump right on it here. So if we're going to have um, more than one input, we need more than one video, just come on over here to the video tab in beautiful Max 8. Scroll on down to, uh, um, we're going to try out chroma key today, which works best um, at least for um, demonstration purposes with things that have distinctive colors in them. So I'm just going to pull the dozer out here. That's pretty distinctive. And uh, then we're just going to get another video here and scroll down and uh, uh, kite. Let's get the DV kite. I'm not sure why it's DV, but double vortex. The double vortex kite. Okay, so and then we're also going to want to be able to watch our videos. So let's uh, type the letter J. You get a JIT dot automatically then, and then we'll just type P window. And as soon as we click outside that P window, we get a nice black window. We'll put one over here. Um, if you want to keep it in scale, hold the shift key down here. And then I'm just going to duplicate that by option clicking on it. Not sure what that is in a PC. I'm sorry, I should learn that someday. And then I'm just going to option click on it again and bring sort of the, the final one down here. This is going to be our plan here, the big window. And then I'm just going to shift click on that and now we've got there. Okay, that looks orderly and also a little bit like a really weird uh, Space Invader face. That's what we're after. So let's connect to the left output of that uh, play movie file, whatever it's called. Connect the left outlet there and then Let's get our effect on board here. Just uh, type the uh, letter J again. You get the JIT, and then let's type chroma key, C-H-R-O, and immediately comes up chroma key. Just click on it, click on it, and then click outside of it. There's JIT chroma key. Now, we're just going to connect that to the big P window here, and then uh, chroma key is an effect that combines two videos. So um, don't do the... Uh, this is probably sending the matrix out, but let's just go get the original the original movie playing here and bring that down and in the left outlet and we'll do the same thing here and go over to the right outlet. If you're wondering where I'm getting the segmented patch cords, you just click options up there and click on segmented patch cords. I've already got them, so I don't need to click it. There you go. Okay, so um, you would think if we would lock our patcher right now that we could actually see what was going to happen. So we could click dozer and we can see the dozer. But if we click the DV kite thing, oops, it's such a short movie double, I was close, maybe it is double vortex, I don't know. Anyway, there's the kite picture. So you can see these are pretty different videos and they have distinctive colors. So that'll be good for finding it. But what you want to do in chroma key is to be able to pick a color that will then become sort of transparent and let the other video through. So this video is essentially playing on a matrix behind this video and we want to click a color to be able to decide which one that is. So we need a couple things here. One is that we need the color. And, uh, well, I guess I should just show you how to do it the way that I always do it, which is um, click on, uh, so click on chroma key, and then uh, we could look in the inspector. It has some of the things, but what we really want is the reference. And so we look under reference and under reference the attributes that you can adjust in chroma key are um, all listed here 
and uh, some of them are uh, somewhat technical, but the ones that we're interested in is the color. That's the reference color. Fade um, sort of helps you smooth the whole thing out. It might not be necessary, but it's nice. And then the one that is sort of crucial is tolerance down here. So what we can see is the word that we have to use to get tolerance is T-O-L. And the word that we have to use to get color is color. That's pleasant enough. And for fade is fade. So let's come over here and we'll uh, type the letter N and we'll type uh, prepend T-O-L. And then we'll put a we'll uh, put a slider above it. Why not? So type N again and type slider. And there's the slider. And we're not sure what the range is that we need for the slider, but um, whoops, I locked my patcher. And then you connect uh, uh, tolerance to the left inlet of chroma key. And then we're going to click on the slider and uh, I'll tell you what, we'll do the slider later. Let's uh, stick a little float in between there first and find out what number we need. So you can just type the letter F and you get a float. And then when you're sliding the float around like this, if you push the shift key down, you can slide it right into that patch cord. And as soon as they all light up, you let go of it and it just inserts itself in the middle. Okay, so now the other thing that we definitely need for chroma key is to know the color that we want to um, allow to become clear. So um, we're going to make another new object, prepend color. But now we have a little bit of a trick here because chroma key uses alpha, red, blue, green. And, well, let's just say that we were getting our color from swatch. So we're going to type a new thing again and type swatch, not the wristwatch, the color swatch. There it is. All right. So when swatch puts out a value, it puts out, and just hover over this, RGBA which is not quite convenient for what we're doing because chroma key needs a RGB. It's just, are you asking why? I wish I could tell you why, but I know that, you know, things change over time and, um, you know, standards are made and standards are broken. So here's how we're going to get around this whole problem. We're going to first do a little unpacking by typing uh, the letter N, get a new object, and then type unpack, and then uh, zero decimal space, zero decimal space, zero decimal space, zero decimal, no more spaces. Okay, and that will give us our red, green, blue, and alpha. This is as with so many things, more complicated than I wish it were. But live and learn. Okay, so then what we're going to do is kind of swap them around and uh, we're going to use not the pack PACK object, but we're going to use pack PAK object because we're going to do these sort of out of order. Wait, I'll explain that in a second. Here we go. New object, P, A, K. Now, the same thing. Zero point space, zero point space, zero point space, zero point. And that gives us the four floating inputs. Okay, color, come on down here. All right, so POC is how they like to say it in Max World. POC. Um, <clears throat> so when what's coming out of here is red but red is the second element. This is A, R, G, B that needs to go into chroma key and R, G, B, A that's coming out of here. So we're just going to shift them 
over to the right, I suppose. And then this is sort of handy. Let's type the letter F here and just make this an output. The, the, wait, I'll stop stuttering in a second. There we go. I can't multitask. Um, if we want to control the alpha, we can actually now control it with this float box, which we couldn't do before because Swatch has no control over its alpha channel. It really only has control over RGB, and then alpha is something that you tell it to do by sending, um, see there's uh, RGB list in the top, uh, green and blue, but you can tell it alpha in the top as we will demonstrate shortly. Anyway, so now we have a color that we can choose and send it to our chroma key. And what will happen, the reason I decided to use POC is that the first thing that will get there is unfortunately the alpha channel and then the green and then the blue and then the red. But the nice thing about POC is it will fire after every single one of those and change the and output the whole thing again so that we'll get the whole list sent even though it'll send it four times in a row slightly modified every time. Okay, there we go. Did anyone understand that? Doesn't matter. Good. Okay, so here we go. Locking our patcher. Let's go for, we're thinking like, let's try to make the white clear first, which would be easy enough here with the swatch. We just go up. And then we get um, oh, uh, white. But it didn't do anything, and I'm going to imagine that the reason for that is that the tolerance is absolutely zero. So let's start dragging our tolerance up here. And wow, that happened really fast at uh, 0.1. There we go. So as soon as it's even close to being white, then all the white becomes transparent here. So let's try um, a different, let's uh, see if we can imagine what that color is. I'm going to imagine that that's somewhere over here and we'll change it over to there. Yeah, you can see it. It starts bleeding through there, not very effectively. And then let's see if we can pull our tolerance up a little bit here and, and get some more of that orange showing through. Yeah, so we can make the orangey yellow of the dozer more and whoops, that's a little too much. So most of the action if you will, seems to be happening here at a, about one, and I'm going to guess that probably a useful range for this slider to have would be anywhere between um, zero and two. And so let's just do that so that we don't uh, screw it up later. I just unlock my patch. I'm going to click on this and then uh, come over here to the inspector and Remember, this is important. The output has to be a float, so click Float Output, and then click a range of 2.0. The minimum's already zero, so that's great, and uh, that should work. So we come back over here, and I'm going to make this a little wider just so I don't have to, uh, you know, step around when I'm trying to get on it there. So there we go. So now we've got a uh, slider that takes care of our color values. So that is uh, all well and good. We can now pick colors. Um, if I wanted to find the gray on there, I could probably come down and pick out more of a gray. So the, is that dark yellow? Maybe darkish blue? And pull the tolerance up until we could see through all the dark shadows like that. So you kind of get the idea. Yeah, it's chroma key. That's what chroma key does. And uh, that's why we pick really weird colors for the background, because then you can pick a really weird color that it doesn't occur in anything else. And, you know, you can do your weather report or music video as you wish. Okay, now some of you may have seen chroma keys and or are maybe dreaming of the kind of chroma key 
where you could just click on the screen and then it would just avoid that color or make that color transparent. And I am going to show you how to do that. I'm going to unlock my patcher here. I am going to type. Yes, just the letter N and the word uh, I'm not trying to be offensive is sucka. S U C K A H. There it is. Sucka. And I think they mean it sucks the color up. Sucker. It's a sucker. It's a color sucker. It's not dirty. And there's what you get when your patcher's unlocked. You get this grid. And <clears throat> you could put this anywhere. Um, but it's mostly useful on the output video because this is the one where you want to make the um, where you want the colors it's going to sense whatever color is underneath it so I'm gonna um, actually before I put it all the way on there I'm gonna connect its output to the top of whoops I didn't click there we go to the top of the swatch and you'll see why in a minute so now I can put it right over the top there and stretch it out so that it fits right over that screen. Nice. Okay. Now you'll notice when you lock your patcher that it completely disappears. That's great. Now if you click white, you see what happens to your, to your patcher here? Um, I should also note that um, although we don't have numbers for these, they all went to zero and this one went to one. And now um, uh, we can see the kite through any place that is white. And we could even turn the tolerance way down there and it would still be so. Whoops. Hey, that's pretty funny. Look at those big silly pixels. There we go. There we go. So that, that, that makes it nicer. Okay, what about if we want yellow? We'll just come up here and, oh, I might have clicked on the S. Try it again. There we go. So that's a sort of yellow-orange, almost the same thing I was guessing before. And look at that. You can see right through it. If we turn the tolerance up, we'll be able to see a little more. Tolerance just means how much plus and minus from that color it can go. There we go. So we can almost, whoops. So we can't quite get over uh, 0.8 before it just fills in the whole sky. But, you know, it works pretty well. So there you have it. That is how to do the multi-effect for chroma key. And I'm just going to stop there, and then I'm going to start over and do uh, another multi-video uh, effect in 30B. So I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching and enjoy your chroma key.